Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, we're going to learn how to construct an ellipse using the Fokey method given the length of both axes. So we have the major axis and the minor axis. Stick around. Let's get into it. So as with any ellipse, of course, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, we have a major and a minor axis. So we're going to draw those. So our major axis is going to have a length of 100 millimeters and our minor axis will have a length of 80 millimeters. Of course, as you might imagine, the major axis will be longer than the minor axis. So we have our two axes here. And they look great. We're just going to measure them to make sure. So we see here 80 on the minor. Okay, no, that's not right. So we have 80 on the minor. And we have... Where's the end? There it is. We have 100 on the major axis. Alright, great. So now let's just establish our four key. All right, so we are going to draw our four key points or establish them 30 millimeters away from the center of our axis. Away from the center of our axis, like this. And I'm just going to mirror this so that it's symmetrical. Great. You may be wondering how I got the focal points I will be pausing the video and explaining it very briefly All right yeah so we'll get into that but here we have it we have our two focal points f1 and f2 I labeled them off camera So you may be wondering how I got the focus points or the foci. Um, I'm going to link a video down below in the description. It's a video I did a couple of years ago that will explain the entire process, including the formula. Get back to it. So we have our focal points, F1 and F2. And what we want to do right now is we want to divide the distance between our foci and the center of the ellipse into three or more equal parts. I have sped up the video a bit, as you can see, but um, the construction that I'm doing here is one that I have featured before on the channel in a previous video, and I will also link that below. So we have our divisions and everything is going along fine. Now it's time for the arcs, right? Off camera, we numbered the lines, as you can see here, one to three, and we also labeled the major axis AB. We're going to draw some arcs, and the radius of our arc will be A1. So the distance between A and 1 is the radius, and F1 will be the center of our arc All right so we're just checking the distance here it's 27.5 so this is going to be the radius of our arc so let's go let's get it So we are drawing our first arc here at the base or at the bottom and then we draw another at the top as you can see here all right so a1 was our first radius our second 
radius will be a2 our third radius will be a3 and for each arc the center of the arc will be at f1 so i'm going to do that now i just i'm just speeding up the video a bit i started speaking quickly when the video started going quickly i don't know why but yeah all right so i'm um, sp i sped up the video good and now we will check a3 the distance a3 42.5 and we'll use f1 as the center again to draw arcs above and below our ellipse so here we have it we have drawn all the arcs on the left side of our ellipse and as I said earlier the radius was a1 a2 and a3 what we're gonna do next is we're gonna draw some more arcs <laughs> all right we're gonna draw some more arcs for these other arcs, the radius will be B1. So B1, B2, B3, and these arcs will be drawn to intersect the arcs that were previously drawn. The center for these new arcs will be F2. Alright, so initially the radius was A1 and the center, A1, A2, A3, and the center was F1. For the second set of arcs, the radius will be B1, B2, B3, and the center of the arc will be F2. So that's how this goes. So the B1 arc will intersect, or the B1 arcs will intersect the A1 arcs. The B2 arcs will intersect the B2 arcs, etc., etc. You can see here that my arcs don't quite intersect so i'm just gonna extend the first one to ensure that they do all right so that's the first one and i'm just speeding it up here again i will try not to speak faster so it's the same thing b2 get the distance that's the radius use f2 as the center draw the arcs to intersect those that were from a2 and then we do it again we get b3 whatever the distance is we use that as a radius f2 is the center draw arcs to intersect the first or the a3 arcs pretty repetitive pretty straightforward All right so what i'm gonna do now is just to neaten up the work a bit because because some of the arcs are quite long i'm gonna just do some trimming just to make things look a little better i'm not removing the construction lines but i'm just going to make them look a little more appealing as you can see here this was sped up This section was sped up times three, just to cut down the length of the procedure. Great. So we have our six pairs of intersecting arcs, and these points are where our ellipse will pass through. Right, I'm not going to go ahead and do it on the right hand side as well. Um, if you are doing this manually, then you would be required to do that. Uh, but using CAD software, I'm just going to mirror it so that we don't have to draw it again. All right, so here we have all the points all around. At this point, we are almost finished. We are almost finished. We are just going to draw 
the ellipse or the shape of the ellipse. In order to do this, I'm going to use I'm going to use the spline command. That's this right here. You can see me selecting it. And I'm going to start at the center base of the ellipse. I usually start at the center bottom or base or at the center top. And um, what I'm doing here is wherever the arcs intersect, I am drawing my line to pass through those points. But I think I just, I think I made a mistake. I think I made a mistake, yeah. If you zoom in here, if you zoom in, you can see that I didn't quite get the point of intersection for the previous cross, the previous pair. So I'm going to start over. I'm going to start over. When you're doing these drawings, it's really a case of precision. You want to be very precise. You want to try to make as little mistakes as possible because a very small mistake can end up throwing off your entire drawing. All right, so we're just going to do the process again. I started at the bottom in the center once more. The reason for doing that is because when I end the drawing, I don't want... I don't want it to be obvious where I started and where I ended the drawing. If I end on the sides where it's very peaky, sometimes I can see it's obvious that this is where I started or ended the drawing. So I like to start at the bottom or at the top where it's a lot more smooth and flat and it's much more difficult to tell where it started. So this is it. This is what the finished product looks like and at this point i'm just gonna change the layer and we're gonna wrap up so this is how you draw or construct an ellipse using the foki method i trust that you would have learned from this video please leave a like if you did and please subscribe if you haven't already i will appreciate it a whole lot and by you leaving a like on this video, it will help YouTube to recommend it to others who may be searching for similar content. Thank you very much.